at the end of the day, we all want our security deposit back. We can't always do everything that we want to in an apartment to upgrade it the way we would like. But in this video today, I'm going to give you some ways that you can upgrade your rental space. I've done videos like this before, so I'm going to try not to be a broken record. So be sure to check those out if you see things that are missing from this video. I've probably talked about them before already. So again, I don't want to be a broken record talking about lighting. You guys already know how I feel about lighting. Anyway, remember, you are still paying for this space. There is no reason why you shouldn't want to make it your own. But I understand that there are some strict guidelines that sometimes we have to follow as renters. I'm going to give you a few options that you can do in your apartment that is renter friendly, but also always do your research. There are factors that can change whether this type of upgrade is going to be good for you. For example, the first one we're going to talk about is removable wallpaper. I don't have it in my space and I'll tell you why. The walls that I have are flat white paint. They are a matte, flat, white paint. Anything I put on these walls will eventually, even if it's a peel and stick option, it will eventually pull off the paint, unfortunately. We really want apartments that have a satin finish. That is a better option for removable wallpaper and removable vinyls altogether. Be sure to think about this when you're putting up wallpaper. But if you do have a satin wall, this is an incredible option. One, because if you're not allowed to paint your space, you can always find a wallpaper that is a solid color. And then it'll look like you painted your wall and you didn't do it at all. You can also add pattern wallpaper and you can even add decals. Decals are really popular, especially those Scandinavian minimalist arches. You can apply that to your wall. You can usually apply that, you know, behind a credenza or console table or something like that. And that can add a little definition between the wall and the table itself. You can layer pictures in front of it as well. But these are easy, easy upgrades to make. But again, don't put up stuff on your wall, assuming that it is going to come down with ease. Be sure to review all the reviews, whether you're buying from Amazon, whether you're buying from Target, Walmart, or a high-end removable wallpaper company always read the reviews. But again, adding like these minimalist decals, whether it's like the small crosses or if you wanna add stripes to your wall, you can even add wallpaper that has a little bit of texture in it. I purchased this black vinyl from Amazon and I love it because it actually has texture in the wallpaper. You can look for things like that when it comes to looking for vinyls or wallpaper, see if they come with texture. If you're looking for a brick wallpaper or something like that, brick is normally very tricky, okay? Because a printed brick wallpaper can look really cheap and really cheesy really fast. The next thing I wanna talk about is a little bit on the lighting, but not entirely. So if you're looking to add sconces maybe to your bedroom, but you don't have the ability to build in electricity, what you can do is attach maybe these light sconces maybe on the sides of your bed, maybe on the sides of your window seal, and you can add these battery operated light bulbs. They have multiple kinds. You have the ones where you can kind of like push it it's a little tap to push kind of light and they have batteries in them and you can use that and they also can come with remotes which is also a plus or they have other options where there are actual light bulbs my grandmother has this in her house and they look like actual light bulbs so that is a plus if you can't run wiring hanging lights from the ceiling is really trendy as well especially when you're doing it by a bed and you're hanging it over nightstands but if you don't have the ability to run wires into your ceiling to provide electricity for your light bulbs this can be a nice option. You guys know that I have light strips under my cabinet in my kitchen. If you wanna elevate your kitchen in an apartment, the easiest thing to do is to add light strips under your cabinet. I didn't even add them. My apartment came with them, but they are stuck on the cabinet. So it's not like they're built in of any sort. You can pick up lighting like this from Ikea very affordably where you can literally just stick it up on the cabinet. You can buy a couple light strips or you can just buy one long light strip from anywhere like Amazon, Five Below, wherever you want. The next thing I wanna talk about is creating storage. I have this Besta unit here. You wanna add storage to your apartment, whether it's like a storage unit. So you can add TV consoles. Here are some examples from Casterly. I really, really gravitate towards Casterly's minimalist design. They are a furniture company that I feel like encompasses my entire aesthetic. So I really love going to them for inspiration. You can also add units storage units and storage cabinets in your space but that look nice like here's an example of one from target it is very affordable it's very trendy and very in and also it will not only add as storage but it'll add as functional storage as well that way you can hide some of the clutter 
we don't have built-ins, right, in, in apartments. They don't normally provide us with built-ins. So either adding your own built-in from like Ikea or a storage unit like this that also serves as decor is a great way to decorate your space and make it functional as well. So you can also look at this one as well. This one is from Crate and Barrel. It's a little bit more expensive to the one that's in Target. So another thing I wanna talk about is stick tiling. Now, flooring is something that we really don't have control over as renters. So if you have an old vinyl flooring that hasn't been changed, you know, those yellow large squares, and you just can't get rid of it, and your landlord has refused to change it, either you can add a large area rug over to cover the flooring, that's an option, or you can buy stick and peel tile. Now, this can be pricey depending on how much space you have to do it. Sometimes I recommend doing this in maybe a bathroom or in a kitchen. It might be a lot more money to do it in an entire space, but if you're willing to make those upgrades, that's an option to do. You can always peel them up. I'm not entirely sure if you can reuse them though, so that's a good question. I don't have them in my space, but if anybody knows, leave it down below. Can you use it again? That's a good question. You can also get the stick and tile wood planks, the long ones that look like wood. You can try and put that in your space and cover the flooring. And then when you're ready to leave, you can peel it back up. It's normally easy to cut and easy to mold. Again, I haven't tried any of these. These are just things that I've researched, but these are an option to kind of cover your floors. And again, like I mentioned, if you don't want to do this route, you can also just buy a large area rug and try and cover it. Another thing you can do, if your walls are blank and bare and you don't want to put up wall paper and you don't want to paint it or you can't paint it, you can try and add molding. So you can do this with adding nails, but I know a lot of people are trying to refrain from adding either holes or damage to their walls. So you can use this with the kind of scotch peel and stick Velcro adhesive that you can put on the wall that usually has a tab that you can kind of pull off when you're ready to remove it. As long as the wood is lightweight enough and normally for molding it is, if you put it in a couple places behind the molding, you can actually add molding around your wall. So if you're into a more traditional look or traditional feel and, and style when it comes to your decor, molding fits in, in that theme very well. It can transition into other styles as well. You can miter your molding at home and that way you can make these 45 degree cuts. That way you can actually either make frames, large ones or small ones. Uh, along with molding, if that is too traditional for you, you can also try and do the now popular slat walls. I want a slat wall so bad. You can do this the same way. Slat walls are just individual wood planks that they kind of pile up next to each other. You guys have probably seen them all over the place. I'll be sure to show pictures of exactly what they look like. You can also do the same effect. If you wanna put these peel and stick, Velcro adhesives on these pieces of wood, maybe one in the top, one in the bottom, one in the middle, make sure they're just not heavy. You can literally add your own flat walls in your home and take them down when it's time to go. The only thing I would say is probably paint both of your moldings or your slat wall, whatever it is that you're doing before you put it up. It would be pretty hard and pretty tricky to do that without getting paint on the wall. So if you're trying to stain your molding or your slat walls, be sure to do that before you hang them up. So another thing you can do is in your kitchen. So if you really like that open shelving look, again, it's not for everyone, but if you really like that look and you have decor that you want to display and you can keep it clean, okay? Because when we do open shelving, we need our shelving to be clutter free and clean. That's the point of an open shelf. If you have like a microwave and then a smaller set of cabinet doors above, you can actually remove those doors from your cabinet. And then you can add some vinyl or some wallpaper in the back of the cabinet to add a little bit more interest to the cabinet. And then you can layer your decor, your glassware, your favorite types of dinner sets. And it doesn't really cost much, right? Maybe if you wanna add the vinyl, yes, but to remove the cabinet doors, it doesn't really cost much. You have the ability to add your own creative touches your, and show your own creative aspects of your style by doing this. Just make sure you label the cabinets left and right so you know which way they go when you go to put them back after you leave. So for you lucky people who have patios, like I'm jealous. I don't have that in my apartment, but for those of you who do, and maybe you just have like a plain concrete patio or they have all these old tilings, you can hide that. And that's so easy to do by going over to Ikea and getting their removable click-in patio sets. They have them in black, they have them in wood, and they really add a lot to an outdoor space. And by doing this, you can add a lot of plants also around your space, living up the space, throw down a rug as well, and that will literally change the space. Gone are the days where you need to go out to a plain concrete patio that just seems cold and uninviting. 
make it your own, hide the flooring, throw down a rug, put up some plants, and then you have your own little oasis in your apartment. So for those of you who have the ability to do this, I'm jealous but do it and send me pictures because I want to see. So another change to make in your apartment, especially when you're first moving into an apartment and it's been used prior and it's probably an older place, if you don't want to go and change the floors, cleaning the grout goes a long way. And I do this in my apartment all the time because my grout is a black grout that I have in between my tiles, my subway tiles, in my bathroom and in my kitchen. And it can get a little grimy, especially in the showers. So in order to clean them, I use this is not sponsored by the way, you guys. This is Zep. I picked this up from Home Depot a while ago. It's a grout cleaner and brightener. And I use this all the time when I'm cleaning my showers or cleaning my floors. Try doing this and squirt. It's like, it has a little nozzle. It's got a safety cap, okay? Cause we don't want the kids to, but there's a little hole and you just squirt it on the grout, either on the floor or in the shower or in the kitchen. Let it sit for a little bit and then grab yourself a little brush and it literally will bring your grout back to life. I promise you, your landlord will actually probably thank you for this at the end of the day because you are doing the work that he should have did or she should have did anyway. So another thing you can change is your window treatments. And I know I've mentioned this before, how those ugly apartment blinds are in spaces when you first move into them and they're dated and they're plastic or they're material, they're ugly. Sometimes you can't remove them. I get it. Some people don't have a place to store all of those blinds. So if you have blinds in your space, you can actually buy these things called no-no brackets where you can actually put them on your existing blinds in your living room or in your bedroom. And that way you can attach, once you put at least maybe three, I would say one in the middle, two in the end, you can secure these to your existing vertical blinds. You can actually add a curtain rod using these no-no blind attachments. That way you don't have to actually remove the blinds and you can actually slide them back into their into the corners behind your curtain so that you don't see them. So this is a way to kind of hide the fact that you have vertical blinds without actually hiding them. I'll link the TikTok video where I've seen this down below. A genius idea, a great idea for a renter. Also, if you're a renter, and you don't want to make a bunch of holes in your wall, try leaning your artwork, leaning your mirrors. Adding mirrors to your space brightens up the space, it bounces light around the space, and it makes it feel larger than it is when you have mirrors in your space. But you don't always need to secure those to the wall. So getting a large, large oversized, either arch mirror or not arched mirror, I have my mirror from Ikea, is a great way to do that. You can also lean your artwork if you wanna add a shelf, or if you're styling a entryway console, you can lean your artwork, a larger one in the back, a mid-sized one, and then a smaller one all the way up front. It actually adds dimension to your space. It adds layers to your space. And guess what? You don't have to hang up anything or put holes in your wall. So you can also try that in a space as well. Now, listen, we're not done here. So like I mentioned, I've already done a bunch of other videos about renter-friendly updates to your space. So be sure to check those out. Also, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like. That way I know you liked it. That way the algorithm We'll know you liked it. I would sincerely appreciate that. All right, guys, I'll catch you guys in my next one. Peace.